If you fail, it's because you stop grinding. You stop caring. You stop working. You stop working for that dream. It's about the grind. It's about the obstacles. It's about the challenges. It's about the pain. That philosopher, that engineer, that thought leader, that critical thinker, come on, that captain of industry, I'm talking to you when your personal life lines up with your purpose. Then public authority is yours. You want influence? I'm not talking about just fame. I'm talking about influence, the power to change people's lives. You, my friends, are going to get there. You are going to get that promotion. You are going to complete that marathon and you are going to run for your life. Not only can you create your life, you can recreate it. You've got a destination. Keep a no excuse mentality. Then the sky is not your limit. The sky is your starting point. I never get turned off. You just don't win in one arena. You win in your sports, you win in business, you win in your personal life. Other people win because you win. It takes faith to step into your purpose. It takes faith to step into your destiny. It takes faith to pull away from everything that is familiar, to step into uncharted territory, to become the person you were born to be. It takes faith. You have to find a way. You must find a way to get back up. This is not the end for you. You will not quit. Do not take this life for granted. Live every moment knowing you will have no regrets. It ain't about being beast mode. It's about life and death mode. Life is always giving you a test. Trying to give you a way out. Trying to give you an excuse not to show up. You gotta have the mentality to show up every day of your life. No matter what life throws at you. It's our responsibility to show up to the Coliseum of life. Prepare for fucking battle. I don't care what you're going through, what life's throwing at you. It's your responsibility to find your new 100%. A part of being a beast is the hunts. It's the hunt that they're excited about. They like to see the gazelles run. Then boom, they take off. Because real lions like to hunt. They love the process just as much as they love the prize. And some of y'all just want to score. You don't like the process. You're not in love with the process. Everybody want to be a beast. And so it's time to do what beasts do. You are a beast. Let others talk about how good you are, how strong you are, how fast you are, how smart you are, how successful you are. That's when you know you're a shark, when others are talking about you. It's about putting it on the line. It's about pushing yourself and giving it 110% of everything you got. I know sometimes people say they're lying. <laughs> But you can't be a lion if you don't understand the rules of the jungle. Keep your commitment never to go back to the life that you once lived. Keep your commitment to creating wealth for yourself, to taking care of your children, to be more responsible. Keep your commitment to live a life of contribution, to keep your commitment to be a conqueror and to act like it and to have authority and dominion of everything in your life. One of those reasons I got on one of my tapes, if life knocked you down, try and land on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get up. Your reasons will help you to get back up again. You're going to face no and rejection every day, but if you're hungry enough, the world will make a place for you. You're afraid of the effort. We're all being tested. And that road to success is a bumpy ass road. Do you think you have the mindset now? Beast mode! Run towards your dream. I want you to know something. That the bigger your dream is, I want you to understand the harder the grind. Ask yourself, what's my dream? What's my dream? 
What are you willing to do that you've never done before? What are you willing to say that you've never said before? You got a dream to buy a house. You got a dream for better relationships. You got a dream to, to win a fight. You got a dream to get your family out of the hood. You got a dream to lose weight. I mean, whatever that dream is, whatever you have, that goal, that improbable feat. They should take sacrifice, blood, sweat, tears, absolute, total focus of, of pushing yourself. And if dreams and goals are coming easy, I submit to you, it's time for you to ratchet up what you're going after because you can achieve more. Start with nothing, high school dropout. Start with nothing, homeless. 12 years to get a four year degree from the university. Start with nothing if you are willing to grind. If you came from a place where you had nothing, that's everything that you need. I kept running toward my dream. Unreasonable results in your life like living your dream and taking charge of your destiny, you've got to be an unreasonable person. The dream's got to get bigger than the disappointment, than the fear, than the anxiety, than the overwhelm. It's got to get bigger, the dream. Once that dream gets bigger and you get a scent for that dream, you start to smell that dream, there's nothing on planet Earth that can stop you. You become armed and dangerous. You are the most dangerous individual on planet Earth. What do you do when you're not the only one that wants to make a million dollars in your company? You're not the only one that wants to be the president. You're not the only one that wants to be the CEO. What if you're not the only one that wants what you want? What if there are thousands of other people who want what you want? You have to outwork them. You gotta outbind them. You gotta get up earlier. You gotta stay up later. You gotta execute and you gotta go from 70. Don't let nobody steal your dream. I used to ask myself, can I do this? And something said within me, you're the one. You're the one. When you have fallen, when you have made a mistake, the worst thing you can do is criticize yourself. At the end of the day, life can be very painful. We can experience loss and worry and the insomnia of reoccurring heartbreak and hardships. It is inevitable. It is self-compassion that gives us the power to face our failures, to face our fears, to face our insecurities, to face what we don't like about ourselves and come out on top. When you're down, find a way to get up. I've been there. I go through it like anybody else. But I have a job to do in this world, and so do you. The real challenge of growth, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, comes when you get knocked down. How you handle it, that's where the growth takes place. Evaluate where you are. Look at it, assess yourself. Assess yourself and assess the situation. What brought you there? What role did you play? All of us are self-made, but only the successful will admit it. If you want to begin to move, you've got to clear your mind of all the unnecessary luggage and baggage that's weighing us down. I'm telling you from personal experience, I know what my life was like when I put in 55. I know what it was like when I didn't try. I know what my life was like when I didn't care. I know what my life was like when I didn't have any dreams or any goals, like, like I didn't want anything. I know what my life was like. Now I'm putting in 120, baby. You put in 120. Not only does it affect your life, it affects your family's life. It affects your friend's life. It affects your community's life. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you to get from where you are. I'm challenging you to stop settling. I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you to stop accepting the life that was given to you. I'm challenging you to give 120%. Are you hearing me? Trying is not good enough. Trying is not gonna get you there. We need potential. We need application. We need dedication. We need motivation. We need discipline. We need to understand that work must be applied. And even when you don't want to do it, find a way to do it anyway. I'm coming back. And I'll be stronger and better because of it. You have got to make a declaration that this is what you stand for. 
If you are going to win the fight for your future, then you are going to have to master self-compassion. Face the conflict. Embrace rather than avoid challenges. And you don't give up on yourself. Do not give up on yourself. When you find yourself criticizing yourself, negatively comparing yourself to others, try to find inspiration in their successes and strengths instead of feeling threatened. You're standing up for your dreams. You're standing up for peace of mind. You're standing up for health. You want it. And you're going to go all out to have it. Everybody gets knocked down. No matter how tough you think you are, you're going to fall. And when you fall, sometimes you fall real hard. But that ground is a hard surface. And I'm going to tell you something. It ain't going to move because you're laying on it. So you need to rise up and you need to rise above it and you need to start moving. Sometimes you have to back up and go within and pray and meditate and recharge your batteries. Go away, clear your head, and then come back and look at it from a different vantage point. Don't operate while you're under the spell or the effect of what's going on. Stop half doing stuff. Stop putting forth 50% effort, 60%. Look, stop. Do it right or just don't do it at all. Are you hearing me? Do it right. There's a lot of people walking around today, they have unchecked rage, unchecked aggression, unchecked anxiety, fear, insecurity. You're gonna to have to care enough about yourself to face it and find a resolve. You got to find out what's the next things you need to be doing. How are you gonna push it to that level and go beyond it? How are you gonna maximize your time? How much energy are you gonna put into this craft? Everything you have, everything you are, everything you're doing, like it's, it's 78. And what I need you to do is I need you to look at yourself in the mirror and say, come on, quit, stop playing. I deserve to see what my life would look like if I gave 120%. Stay dedicated. You got to keep on pushing forward. You got to keep on fighting the good fight. You got to put aside the excuses because excuses won't lift you up. Excuses won't give you the power that you truly need. You've got to be willing to go against the tide. You've got to be willing to harness your will and say, in spite of this, I'm in control here. I'm not gonna let this get me down. I'm not gonna let this destroy me. When you get knocked down, how long are you gonna stay down? When you lose your job, when you lose that loved one, regardless if it's your husband, your wife, your child, whatever it is, do you have the ability to go through the hurt and the pain of that loss? Regardless of what you're going through, the best time you know that you are strong is when you're at the weakest point of your life. I want you to see yourself in your mind's eye and say to yourself, I love myself unconditionally and I forgive myself. If I knew better, I would have done better. To win the war for your future, then you are going to have to master the muscle of self-compassion. When you are so far down that hole, you looking up and you don't see no light, but yet you know there's an end to this darkness. That's when you'll find out just how strong you really are. Just keep moving forward. If you think that you're going through something so bad right now, wait until tomorrow if tomorrow comes for you. Look at the person next to you. Look at people all over the world if you ever come in contact with certain individuals and ask yourself, are they going through a lot more than what I'm going through? Because honestly, there are always going to be people that are going through a lot more than you're going through right now. Remember the past, but do not live in the past. Every mistake you have made up until this very moment, forgive yourself. With forgiveness comes freedom. You're going to have people to do things to you. Things are going to happen to you. And the most important thing to do is to harness your will and let it go. And move so you can grow. So you can get on with your life. It doesn't matter about what happens to you. What matters is, what are you going to do about it? This is a process, and you have to hurt just a little bit so you can understand what it means to be strong. 
So don't give up on your hopes. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on yourself. Every day that you wake up, remember someone else did not. You are alive for a reason. Why on earth are you here? This is your day. You've got a window. You've got another 24 hours because you may not make it to tomorrow. And I'm just wondering what you're going to do with the day. The reason why days often feel meaningless and mundane is because we are directionless. you got to get some direction. I'm just wondering what are you going to do in this next 24 hours that you did not do. I'm just wondering if you're going to level up two millimeters more than you did yesterday. Are you going to get better? Are you going to get stronger? Are you going to get wiser? Are you going to see this thing differently? I'm just wondering when are you going to see the power of 24 hours? That you did not have to wake up. That God did not have to give you another opportunity to be here. Another opportunity to forgive somebody. Another opportunity to let it go. Another opportunity to look up and get up. I'm just wondering when are you going to seize the opportunity? Accept where you are. Get cognizant about your money. Get cognizant about your relationships. Where are you mentally? Where are you spiritually and emotionally and financially and economically? Are you driving what you are destined to drive? Where's your health? Where's your heart? Let's get aware of where we are. This is my day to read a new book. This is my day to start a journey. This is my day to make an investment. This is my day to invest in myself. This is my day and this is my time and it's my turn to crush this day. This is the day I learn like I never have. This is the day I invest like I never have. This is the day I take it seriously. I got one window. I may not be here tomorrow. I'm just wondering if you're gonna rise and see the opportunity. Get up, get up, get up. You've got a day to conquer. If the day's going to be good, I got to heal from the mistakes that were made yesterday. I've got to believe that I don't have to make the same mistakes. It's time to heal. Today I heal. Today I heal from every mistake that is made. Today I heal from everything that I said that I could have said better and everything that was said to me that I wish was never said. I heal today from the people that pushed me verbally but did not support me physically, that were never present. Today I heal, I heal, I heal. I heal from what I did not have. I heal from what I did have that I did not want. Today I heal. After we heal, we have to acknowledge what went wrong. What could I have done differently? What boundaries did I allow to be breached? relationally, financially, with my investments, with my mindset. Where did I put my energy and I didn't get anything back in return? It's like investing in a vending machine with a sign on it that says out of order. And I'm convinced that many of us invest in people and places that are just simply out of order. And this is why we're trained. And this is why we're tired. And this is why we're weary and well-doing. And this is why the day is mundane and it's the same old, same old. Something's gotta change with you. I'm just wondering if you're gonna repeat the cycle. If the redundancy of mediocrity is gonna continue, we've got purpose and we've got fulfillment and we've got destiny breathing down our necks. Let's accept the truth. This is the only way the day matters is if we get aware of what's happening and what's going on. What has my attention? Do I have the attention span of a toddler or a champion? And so once we accept where we are and we accept that truth, we got to give ourselves time to heal. 
We get to learn from not only our mistakes, but learn from others' mistakes. We have to study why we fail, how we fail, and we've got to ensure that we never do it again. If you're going to win the war for the day, you're going to have to have a high threshold for pain. You will be offended. People will let you down. People will lie to you. Places, circumstances, life will unfold and unravel. This life will knock you in your mouth. But you got to stay focused. Even when it's painful, even when we're ostracized, even when we're excommunicated and ghosted, it may hurt, but that pain will subside. If you're going to crush this day, this week, this month, this quarter, and this year, and if the rest of your life is going to be the best of your life, you're going to have to think differently, plan differently, set the goal, and you're going to have to write it down. You've got to get clear, you've got to get specific, and once you get specific, what you wrote down mandates what you do. I said it before, I say it again. Oftentimes, the day feels mundane and meaningless because we are directionless. Write the vision down. Get clear, get specific, write it down. Document it, get serious about it. Write it, read it. If you want to see success, then you need to make the planning stages significant and you need to see the value in the process. We want wealth, but we don't want a plan. We want success, but we don't want significance. We want connection, but we don't want correction. I've got to write it down and not only write it down, but I need my circle of accountability to correct things that may be wrong. Because if you're trying to build this dream and walk in your destiny by yourself, if you think you can pull it off with no help, with no purpose partner, then it's too small. I'm speaking healing over you. I'm speaking breakthrough over you. I'm speaking that you walk into your future, that you'll let go of what was to step into what is. I, I, I believe this for you. I believe that as you become and not just do, that what you seek will pursue you. Destiny will begin to chase you down. No matter how far you have sunk, no matter how hard you have fallen, you've got enough grit, you've got enough grace, you've got enough faith, you've got enough courage to stand up. It's time to rise. This is your day. Get up and conquer your day. I would rather you confront, fight, and fail than for you just to settle for the comfort of remaining the same. Change is tough, but change is possible for some of you. The world's not going to become easier all of a sudden. No, as you mature, you're going to have more responsibilities, more things that people expect out of you. But the truth is, you can do hard things. The truth is, as long as there's breath in your lungs, there's hope in your heart. Ask yourself, what's my dream? What's my dream? You think you're just here to work on a job? Pay the bills, keep a roof over your head, a car note, and then die? Come on, give me a break. Raise the bar on yourself. Challenge yourself. Decide you're not going to be the same person. I want you to have the mindset that you're gonna live an expanded vision of yourself and you're gonna go all in. I don't know your name, 
but I know you have a dream. You may be listening to me in your closet, your bedroom, the gym, the car, the bus, the train, the plane. I don't know where you're going, but I know you are going somewhere. You've got a destination. Keep a no excuse mentality. Then the sky is not your limit. The sky is your starting point. I never get turned off every single day. I want my destiny. I want my dream. You got to have this vision of yourself beyond your circumstances. You got to see yourself every day. I can do this. I can make this happen. I'm blessed and highly favored. Good things are supposed to happen to me. You got to see yourself every day and get out of your mind those old thoughts, that old belief system. Every day you got to sell yourself on that it's possible. You want to go somewhere you've never gone? You got to do something you've never done. You got to say something you've never said. You got to go to a place in you that you've never even been. You're not sentenced to this life this way. You chose it. I feel like on this side of COVID, like I've tried to even hit a different gear. Because one thing that I've realized over the last several years of my life, things that I take for granted can be taken from me. And so now any moment that I get a chance just to kind of lecture or to communicate or to challenge somebody to maybe do what I long for people to do, for me to do, not even you, but for me to even do. And that's to live a life where I wake up and I look in the mirror and I am determined to confront myself. I'm determined to have conflict resolution inside of myself when I'm open and I'm honest with my behaviors and how I'm operating and what I'm doing with my time and my energy and my focus. See, let me share something with you. The easiest thing I've ever done was to earn a million dollars. The most difficult thing I've ever done was to believe it could happen to me. We all want to do something. We all want to be somebody. We all want to go somewhere. And these things are going to happen. We've got to stop habitually gravitating to excuse. You've got a destiny to fulfill. You've got a purpose to walk into. You've got a test to pass. You've got dots to connect. Rooms to walk in. Stages to stand on. And tables to sit down at. But you got to put a new mind in you. You got to get out of your mind. You got to begin to restructure your thinking. I'm ready to do this for my family. I'm ready to do this for my mother. I'm ready to win for my father. I'm ready to make history and ready to do something that nobody ever thought I could do. And we mistake the fact that we're supposed to be comfortable 24-7. Well, let me tell you something. Comfortable is equivalent to complacent. It's not always about the accomplishment. It's about the effort. I choose not to be a common man. It's my right to be uncommon if I can. I seek opportunity, not security. I want to take the calculated risk. To dream and to build, to fail and to succeed. I refuse to live from hand to mouth. I prefer the challenges of life to the guaranteed existence. The thrill of fulfillment to the stale calm of utopia. I will never cower before any master, nor bend to any threat. It's my heritage to stand erect, proud and unafraid, to face the world boldly and say, this I have done. doubt you I'm worried when you doubt you because when you doubt you you can't get nothing done when you doubt you every little thing that gets in your way turns you back when you doubt you all of a sudden things just seem to be harder but out of everybody who doubts you you can't doubt you you got to believe in you you got to believe in your ability you got to believe that you can win We get one opportunity to come this way. We get one shot. We got one life to live. Life is too short to make excuses. So I just came to talk to the game changers and to the change agents who are willing to confront any part of you that's not speaking to your madly, wildly amazing future. When somebody is in love with who they've been called to become, what they've been called to fulfill, what they've been destined to do, there is no day off. I'm telling you, don't wait another moment. 
Don't wait another day. Don't wait another minute. It's lonely. It's challenging. It requires discipline. It requires perseverance. It's a mindset. It's not over until I win. People that make excuses are not connected to their destination. They don't have an end game. They don't have a goal. You have allowed yourself to become a weak link covered under the blanket of excuses. But I'm just wondering if there's anybody here that has a dream. Ready. Come on, come on. I am ready. Come on, let me hear you. I am ready. One more time. I am ready. The pen has always been in your hand. I say write a story that's going to be damn good to read. And ask yourself, what's my dream? What are you willing to do that you've never done before? What are you willing to say that you've never said before? When, when you live like a warrior, you are vigilant, you are courageous, you, you, you take initiative, you are ambitious, you have an expanded vision of yourself. You're going to take some chances on you. You're going to bet on you. You don't settle for any and everything when you're a warrior. And you got to be in fight mode. You got to be ready to fight. Life is a fight for territory. Once you stop fighting for what you want, what you don't want will automatically take over. This is the year for reset. This is the year for restart. This is the year for reignite. This is the year for repeat the things that you love. This is the year for recommit. This is the year for redesign. This is the year for re-engage. This is the year for restart. This is that year. Fight like a warrior and die a legend. Instead of the path of least resistance, I started choosing the path of most resistance to prepare myself for the journey that was coming my way. And you realize through hard work, you can outwork anybody. No matter how badass they are. It starts with yourself, man. You gotta start diving into those things that you are afraid of. You don't gain confidence by going to the spot that makes you feel good. It's gonna be a false reality. And the second life gives you that challenge, all you wanna do is go back to what gave you confidence, is that happy spot. No, what gave me confidence was spending years at a kitchen table trying to learn how to read and write on my own, realizing I can't learn the way you learn. I can't, but I can learn. What gives you confidence, not being afraid, is overcoming the fear. That's what gives me confidence, is facing these things, overcoming them. And maybe not overcoming them every day, but facing them, and facing them, and facing them pretty soon like this. You know what, man, this is where it's at. It's not in that comfort zone. It's in the discomfort zone is where my confidence is getting built. Mm -hmm. That's where it's getting built. Happiness, peace, enlightenment, it's all up here, man. It's all up here. It's all up here. You just gotta be willing to go and face it. And that's the hard part. The physical standard is not what they need to meet. It's a mental standard you must meet in life. That's how I live my life. I now know that there is no cap on the human mind. There's no cap. We cap it ourselves. The most people quit. I had just started. And when you take that mindset and you learn to flip that around, that's what made me powerful. And my body followed. And so I said, I want to do this. I'm going to give myself a challenge every single day until the fear goes away. That's right. And I feel like that's what more of us should be doing. I'm hearing that that's what you, how you live your life. That's all it is, man. And it helps me feel so much more confident. When you overcome that fear yep. of saying, this doesn't have control over me anymore. That's right. It's like, you can be at such more peace. A lot of us speak in hollow words. I used to speak in hollow words. 
I don't do it anymore. Everything that comes out of my mouth has substance. It's real. We all have these feelings in our bodies, in our minds, in our souls. I act on mine. A lot of us who are afraid of something, we allow our minds to choose the path of least resistance so we go a different route. When I'm afraid of something, it's telling me you must, you must do that. Life is one big mind game. And you're playing it with yourself. You cannot lose perspective of where you've come in life. I'm trying to give people a different thought process of life where failure, hell, disappointment, discomfort is a great learning tool. And many people don't understand that, but it's these few moments in life that you have. Like for me, I always talk about it. Rocky won round 14. That one two minute and 13 second clip of Rocky getting up when Apollo knocked him down. That one clip, when I was going through a very bad time in my life, I saw what I wanted to be. And it wasn't a guy that won. It wasn't a guy that won everything he did. It was a guy that kept getting up after being knocked down. So I realized if that two minutes and 13 seconds changed my life, that's all it was. I saw something that I needed to be in the world I was living in. Maybe my story will give someone the two minutes and 13 seconds they need to change their life. Everybody's got a story. We don't share it on social media. We share our nice life on social media. We, have, we all have a dungeon. I'm just willing to talk about mine. Mental toughness isn't something that you sample. It's something that you live in every day. Whenever hardness comes, and you don't know what it is, it may be different for you than it is for me, but you go back to your insecurities. And then when you go back to your insecurities, you then look for comfort within those insecurities. And we all look for that cookie that your mom used to give you when you were sad, when you were sick. We look for our wife or our husband. We look for comfort. It's in those moments you must retrain your mind to think differently in health. The mental standard is you must know how far you've come. I walk in a room now and I know the hours and years and decades I put into David Goggins. That's something, it's not on the wall. It's not a trophy on the wall. It's not a medal on your neck. I don't care how you perceive David Goggins because through my journey, I figured out the one piece I was missing. I thought it was cars. I thought it was women. I thought it was money. I thought it was everything. The one piece I was missing was me having the courage to face myself. Where I got my work ethic from was the hours I had to spend learning this. When you sit down and you're not smart, and you have a disability, yeah. and you still want to be at the top of your class, I didn't want to just get by. When I realized that I can learn through hard work, and I can beat the valedictorian in school, but I got put in 10 hours more mm -hmm. a day than he does. You know what kind of strength comes from that? When you're sitting down, that guy, that, that valedictorian study for an hour, and you know I caught you. I have the work ethic to catch you. That's where David Gagas got really invented. Yeah. Was at a kitchen table with 20 spiral notebooks that were empty. And then they were full. And when you can go through that, I still have them in my storage unit. You go through these spiral notebooks of your life, and you realize this is how I learned. This is unbelievable. It wasn't until I got real sick and my life got real quiet. I, I went from running 205 miles in 39 hours to I couldn't get out of bed. My life was taken from me. And that's wow. when I realized I hadn't taken time to think about what I'd done in my life. I'd done all these things, but there was no finish line. I finished a race of life and I wouldn't even receive my medal. I'd go on. <laughs> I get in the car and I go. When I started figuring out life, that I was, I was leaving so much in the tank, once I realized, my God, man, I was this dumb, 
fat kid being bullied, and now I'm a 180 pound person who lost 106 pounds in less than three months. Learn to read, learn to do this, learn to do that. I was like, I need more. I was fueling my mind with everything. I never took time to say, my God, you came from this hell, and you're here. I had come 8,000 miles from where I started. But if you never know that, you're still in a $7 a month place. So it's that quiet place. It's that place by yourself. It's those hours and years and decades by yourself in the grip of life. When life has you by the throat and choking you out and you're sitting there calm because you're trying to figure it out. You're not panicking. You're not quitting. You're not throwing in the towel. You're saying there's a way around this. And when you figure it out, when life has you gripped in advice and you can figure that out, that's when you overcome. That's when you overcome. The journey getting there was harder than going through it. You know, so that's the whole thing about life, man. It's, it's, it's that journey that, that makes you who you are. I know it's cold, but are you courageous enough to step into uncharted territory, beating on your crab day and night? I need you to disappear for the next 30 days. What does that look like? 720 hours dedicated to the future! Where focus goes, energy flows. The problem is you put too much energy into Netflix. You put too much energy into distractions. You put too much energy into entertainment. You put too much energy into things that are not feeding your purpose and destiny. Can you walk away from everything? Life has knocked you to the ground. You have survived the greatest traumas of your life. How tired are you of where you are right now? How bad do you want to get to that next level? What are you willing to do? What are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to give up? Who are you willing to let go to get where it is that you want to be? See, everybody wants to be successful. Everybody wants to climb mountains. Everybody wants to be praised and celebrated. But nobody wants to sacrifice. Nobody wants to put in the work. Nobody wants to let go of every single distraction. Can you learn how to say no to what's hurting you? No to what's stopping you? No to the people that don't believe in you? The fakes and the phonies and the people that keep saying that they'll support you when you get there, but they leave you when you arrive. Why are you here? And what are you going to do about it? Because the truth of the matter is, we have a purpose, we have a destiny, we have fulfillment. We've got connections to make, we've got people to meet, we've got rooms to walk in, we've got tables to sit at. And I'm just wondering if you are willing, if you are courageous enough, if you have the faith, if you're bold enough to sit down for 30 days and write down what it is that's killing you. Can you walk away from everything for 30 days? Just one month, 720 hours. Imagine who you could be in 30 days. You got one life to live. Rain, sleep, or snow. The time is now. I got three words for you. Shut it down. Log out of the social media. Get off the internet unplug and evaluate where you are and where you're supposed to be. And I know you're broken and I know you're tired and I know you're weary and I know you're confused and, and I know that you've got questions and I know you're fractured and I know you're bleeding in places nobody can see. But if you shut it down, you can heal. You're standing at the precipice, the edge of the greatest move in your life. And, and, and the time is now like never before to take a leap of faith. It takes faith to jump off of the edge. It takes faith 
to step into your purpose. It takes faith to step into your destiny. It takes faith to pull away from everything that is familiar, to step into uncharted territory, to become the person you were born to be. It takes faith. Can you disappear for 30 days? The first person that needs to be influenced in your life is you. It's you. You can't lead anybody. You can't go anywhere unless you have awakened yourself on the inside to follow a specific plan. Write it out. I need you to disappear. Life is not due to the ground. There are people that have tried to bury you alive and you survive. Are you bold enough? Are you radical enough in your hunger and your thirst to go after what it is that you believe is yours? Are you crazy enough? Are you courageous enough to disappear for 30 days? Come back and shock the world! Can you suffer now that you live the rest of your life a champion? Here's the reality. You will always be where you are until you acknowledge the leeches in your life. It is time for you to navigate through the conversation, comb through your context. There are people that are taking from you everything, taking your time, taking your energy, taking your thought life, reprogramming and reconditioning you to do something that you have not been destined to do. And the time is now to get tied to people that are gonna help to position you and lock you in a place where you can fulfill purpose and destiny for 30 days, 720 hours. Imagine if you began to write down the people that have not fed into your purpose, the people that have not fed into your destiny, the people that have lied in your face, the fakes, the phonies, the frauds. Can you identify what has kept you broken? What has kept you broke? What has kept you defeated? What has kept you covered under the blankets of anxiety and stress and overwhelm? Your DNA has been mutated by people that are beneath you and it's nothing wrong with having people in your life that you serve, that you love. But you're trying to make business moves with people that don't think like you, they don't walk like you, they don't sacrifice like you. They're not willing to put in the blood, the sweat, the tears behind closed doors. A man is rewarded in public for what he does in private. Think over the things you've discussed with people. Go through the process. Go through the mud. Run in the rain. Dance in the snow. Inhale, exhale. I know it's cold on the other side, but it's time for you to cross over because you're too comfortable. Disappear for 30 days. Come back and shock the world. Who you are today has gotten you as far as you're going to get. If you're going to get any further, you gotta reinvent yourself. And if you're going to reinvent yourself, you've got to set it down for 30 days. You still keep trying to walk into your future fractured, broken, hurting. You need to walk into your future whole, conditioned, ready to grab the people that believed in you before you made it to the top. Go back and get them, but first you've got to condition yourself. You're fractured, you're broken, you're under anxiety and depression, and you've even been borderline suicidal at times. You've lost loved ones. Come on, who am I talking to? I'm talking to that person that's tired of where they are, and you are bold enough, you are crazy enough, you are courageous enough to shut it down for 30 days. talked about it enough. You've talked to your haters about it. You've talked to your supporters about it. You've posted about it. You've shared about it. You've written about it. Now it's time to put the work in. Disappear for 30 days. I need to constantly remind myself over and over again, I am not yet where I want to be, but I know I'll get there. It's not enough to hope to win one day. You've got to expect to win today. When you set a goal, 
there needs to be a sense of urgency. See, we don't have the courage, and that's what it takes, courage. It takes guts to do that which you know you need to do. If you don't have the courage to act, life many times will move on you and make you act. Life will whoop your butt so bad. You will be so miserable, you will catch so much hell, you say, yes, I will do it. What do you want me to do? Take me. That dream is not going to wait and say, take a breather. It's going to say, come catch me. Catch me if you can. If only I'd taken the chance. They didn't start a business. They didn't ask that crutch out for a date. They didn't travel. They had an opportunity at, at one point in their life to do something beyond play it safe. They chose not to do that and now they regret it. Many of us don't do the things that we want to do and don't act because of lack of self-confidence. We don't believe enough in ourselves. Believe in everything that you are and understand that within you there's something greater than any obstacle you'll ever face. Have faith in your abilities, work hard, never give up, and there's nothing you can't accomplish. It's all on you. If you fail, it's because you stopped running. If you fail, it's because you stopped grinding. You stopped caring. You stopped working. You stopped working for that dream. That dangled in your face. The gift that God left you. Don't be the person that forgets to open your gift. Because that dream has everything you need in it. That dream is the road that will lead to your paradise. Regret hurts. There's no question about that. But here's the thing. Regret also instructs. And you can't have one without the other. So if you avoid the pain, you don't get any of the learning. So what you have to do is be able to process that pain. And I think there's a way for us to do that, to take our regrets, use them as signals. You, my friends, are going to get there. You are going to get that promotion. You are going to complete that marathon and you are going to run for your life. Not only can you create your life, you can recreate it. Because in order to begin to reinvent your life, you've got to make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort that you really got to put all of yourself into it. There's nothing going to stop me. If you didn't make me, you can't break me. If you didn't make the sun come up, you can't stop me. If you didn't make the moon shine at night, you can't stop me. My purpose, my will, my dedication, my motivation is all about doing the business because guess what, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I'm about. I'm about that business, I'm about that life. What are you about? Discipline sounds hard, but it's only hard when you don't want the reward bad enough. When you want something bad enough, you will wake up early. When you want something bad enough, you will pass on hanging out with your friends. When you want something bad enough, you will not back down. You don't have to prove anything to anyone but yourself. You begin to discover some things about you that you don't know you've got. Stop waiting for your dreams. Run towards your dream. Because the moment you stop running, the moment you stop fighting, is the day you will lose it. Don't wait for it. Continue to fight. Continue to chase of what you truly want out of your life. Today is here. Today you're breathing. Today is your opportunity. Work like hell. Crack the ground and keep moving. 
Make the ground shake, crack the world, get it going, don't let nothing stop you. When the rest of the world shuts you down, you got to be the one to stand up, shout out, cry out, stand tall, work hard, dig deep, and go after it. Day one or one day, you decide. I look back sometimes at moments of regrets in my past. I wish I had made better decisions in my life. I truly do. If only I had pushed just a little bit more, did a little bit better, just an inch, just a fraction of an inch is all I needed to give. I know, ladies and gentlemen, there are moments in your life you've experienced it too. You didn't rise up to the challenge when, when it called for you. You didn't rise up to the challenge because you were afraid of it. We need to understand how to deal with our negative emotions. We can't ignore them like no regrets. We can't wallow in them like, oh my God, it's so terrible, I'm such an awful person. So among the misunderstandings are, we think that when we experience regret, it's somehow an aberration when in fact, everybody experiences regret. Regret makes us human. Regret is part of the human condition. What's more, we think that regret makes us weaker when in fact, the research shows that done right, regret can make us stronger, that we can enlist our regrets as a, an engine for forward progress. What's a winner's mentality, you ask? It means being focused on yourself and not other people. It means having desire. It means wanting it willingness to work for it. You simply have to give it everything you have to get it. The one thing that you must understand is that you don't get any do-overs. Once your day ends, that's it. So what action do you need to commit to taking today? This is for the dreamers. The dreamers that cannot sleep. The dreams, they run away from us when we're running our fastest. We will not be last. We will meet our dreams in our paradise. We will marry our dreams. We will hold them tight to our hearts. And we will make them ours. Make them ours forever. Come here, dreams. I'm chasing. So you're better off just making decisions for fundamental reasons, doing things you care about that are meaningful and that contribute, and, and being alert to opportunity along the way, recognizing that the path is not a path, it's the opposite of a line. It's a messy, three-dimensional squiggle. I need to constantly remind myself I'm not yet where I want to be, but I know I'll get there. Those of you out there, you lose it and you don't deserve to lose. You put in the work, you worked hard and you lose it. And I need you to do me a favor. This is the year to turn that around. Yes, you were rejected the last time, but go for it again. You were overlooked the last time, but show up again. Why? Because you are not finished. It is not over. You are not done. It is not too late. But what separates a dreamer from a doer? Let me break that down. Three words, consistent, follow through. Imagine a basketball player shooting hoops. How do you know if that shot's gonna go in? How do you know if that person is a shooter? You know how you become a shooter? You know how you knock it down? It's all in the follow through. I know about tough times. They can make you or they can break you. Come on now, come on, bring it. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, God not giving us spirit of fear. So I didn't have time to be fearful. I had to replace fearfulness with being fearless and creative and take the initiative to do something else with my life. I am going to make it. This 
is my comeback story. It takes faith to step into your purpose. It takes faith to step into your destiny. It takes faith to pull away from everything that is familiar, to step into uncharted territory, to become the person you were born to be. It takes faith. So from the start, you must decide that you refuse to remain where you are. Have you ever thought about inspiring somebody else? Have you ever thought about lifting somebody else? We need you to be a light in the midst of darkness. This world has gone crazy. This world needs you to rise up. This world needs your dream. This world needs you to be you. Give as much time and energy to your dream as you do to your fears. That creates the opening for miracles to show up in your life. I need you to acknowledge the fact, acknowledge that you lose it. Are you hearing me? Acknowledge it, own it. Own up to the fact that I'm losing, E. I'm losing financially, E. I'm losing. I'm losing in my marriage, E. I'm losing. I'm losing with my kids, E. I'm losing. Personal development, I'm losing, E. And I'm tired of losing. I need you to own up to it. I'm losing. I'm a high school dropout, I'm losing. I'm working minimum wage, I'm losing. I'm getting in trouble with the law, I'm losing. My mom ain't talking to me in a strained relationship, I'm losing. I'm asking you to control what you can control. You can control going to bed. You can control getting up. You can control being on time. You can control going to class. You can control showing up. You can control doing your homework. You can control your attitude. You can control being nice. You can control doing what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. It's your boy E.T. saying, you want to be a winner and you want to stop losing? You minimize the errors and make the rest of your life the best of your life. Even when it looks like you're losing, you're winning. Never let uncertainty or doubt be the reason why you quit. Don't underestimate yourself. You do what you can do, and God will do what you can't do. Take the initiative, learn something new, throw your net on the other side, be ambitious, Reach, ask for help, not because you're weak, but because you want to remain strong. Just make up your mind and expect things to get better for you. You need to walk into your future whole condition, ready to grab the people that believed in you before you made it to the top. Go back and get them, but first you've got to condition yourself. Come on, who am I talking to? I'm talking to that person that's tired of where they are. You have to find a way. You must find a way to get back up. This is not the end for you. You will not quit. Do not take this life for granted. Live every moment knowing you will have no regrets. We are alive and breathing and capable of more than we could ever imagine. See, we all have these tough moments in life. Walt Disney filed bankruptcy seven times and he had two nervous breakdowns. Oh, he was bent, but he wasn't broken. No. He kept creating. Someone stole his first cartoon that had great promise. And, and someone stole it. Somebody on his team stole it from him. His heart was broken. But he didn't stay there being angry and bitter and talking about it. He created Mickey Mouse. Had that person not stole his first cartoon, Mickey Mouse would not have been born. Many times when one door closes, another door opens, but we many times spend time looking at and talking about the closed door. We don't see the open door. Giving up is easy. Succumbing to how you feel is easy. But hanging in there when you feel like you don't have anything left, now that's hard. So are you willing to make the tough decisions? 
Are you willing to stretch yourself? Are you willing to get up every time you fall? If you're gonna get to the top, you gotta know what it feels like to be at the bottom. You gotta know what it feels like to crawl through the dirt and the mud and all of the things that you don't feel comfortable in being in. What do your eyes see? What is your vision? I need you to commit to it. Whatever just went through your mind right now, I need it to be big and I need you to commit. I need you to be big thinking. I need you to commit. I need you to make a plan and I need you to follow through. That is all success requires is for you to rise up. Without failures or challenges, there can be no success. Then, you will get up and you will go up. Miracles happen when you give as much energy to your dreams a dream of, of picking up the pieces and starting all over again. The dream of if you get knocked down in life, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. A dream that when a doctor looks at you and said you're terminal and you say no, you determine the diagnosis. God determines the prognosis. The dream that this has not come to stay, it has come to pass. Oh, when you give as much time and energy to your dream, to this new vision of yourself, I'll give you all your eyes can see. Focus. There's greatness in you. There's so many people counting on you. You've heard this a million times, that the cemetery is full of potential. And that's true. Because that person didn't do what they needed to do through the dash. We all are born and we all gonna die. And I'm gonna ask you a question, what are you gonna do with your dash? On three, beast mode. One, two, three. Beast mode. No, come on, one, two, three. Beast mode. Come on, one, two, three. Beast mode. Don't give up, don't give up on your dreams. Don't, go, go pick it back up. There's a dream you left two, three years ago. Somebody told you you couldn't do it and you internalized that foolishness. Stop listening to the haters. Shut them down, shut them up. You want to shut your haters up, how do you do it? You do it by being successful. You don't do it by falling into their traps, doing what they want you to do, putting your head down. You don't do it by not being successful. Let me tell you what I learned. Nothing succeeds like success. And so pick your dream back up. Pick your goals back up. Kill a, kill, kill a noise, shut them down and surround yourself with people who will help you, who will help you, who will speak life into you and not death. People who will speak life into you and help you to get from where you are to where you want to be. It's your boy E.T. Remember, remember I don't care nothing about your past. I got one too. Listen to me, you have the opportunity right now to make the rest of your life the best of your life. Today we gotta ghost everyone. Anyone that ever doubted us, anyone that ever lied to us and told us that they believe in our vision, we gotta reset. We live in a culture of busyness, distraction, and noise. And sometimes the only way something's going to change is if we disappear. We gotta focus on the reason why we started everything. Why we woke up early in the morning to grind. Why we cried those tears. When we wanted the world to say yes, but everyone continued to say no. You see, you gotta forget about the dollars. Can you unplug from people's ideas, from people's agendas, from people's viewpoints and perspective of you and life? And you unplug. Forget about the dollars that told you that you didn't have what it takes to be the greatest. You gotta reset. What if you could just shut out every distraction? What if you could just shut out the world for just a season and focus on you? You have to disappear and put the work in and come back and shock everybody that doubted you. You gotta understand the power of being alone. 
Let's go back into the darkness where all the greatness was created, where all the motivation was created. Let's get back to the beginning. Because only then will you hear the thoughts of the greats. We celebrate athletes and we celebrate critical thinkers and innovators and actors and we praise them and claim them our heroes and we follow them by the millions. We love what they do in public but you don't know the story behind the glory. You don't know the blood, the sweat. You didn't see the tears that they cried, the prayers that they prayed, the countless weeks where they went without sleep to get where they are. I'm just wondering if there's anybody here that is willing to go through the process in the dark room that prepares us and equips us for the stages of destiny. Rise, let's ghost everyone. You got to get back to that child. That child that wanted to dream. That wanted to chase everything the world told him that he couldn't have. Yes, we got to reset. We're surrounded by the noise. We're surrounded by the social media, the Instagram. All of these things that give us no fulfillment. And the reason why you feel this way it's because you've been surrounded by negativity. You've been surrounded by individuals that call themselves your friend. But in all reality, they're just another energy drainer. They're just another person that wants to tell you that you cannot accomplish your dreams because they failed at every obstacle they ever tried to defeat. Let's go back into that hole. Let's go back into the darkness. Some of the most monumental and transformational portraits and pictures that we've ever seen were developed in the dark room. I'm talking to that athlete. I'm talking to that administrator. I'm talking to that nurse, that doctor. I'm talking to that student. I'm talking to that communicator. I'm talking to that pioneer, that inventor. I'm talking to that entrepreneur. I'm talking to that preacher. I'm talking to that person who refuses to stay where they are. I'm talking to that person that doesn't have a problem laying in obscurity because you know that when you come out of the dark room, all eyes on you. Rise from that ghost state. A new man and a new woman on its journey to greatness. Why are you here? What is your destiny? I got a question. What will you do when no one is watching? What will you do when no one is listening? That's the only time that we'll be able to bring something to this world that it never seen before. One of the greatest challenges with disappearing is understanding the revelation of building in the dark. The secret of change is to focus all of our energy, not on fighting the old, but building the new and specifically behind closed doors when nobody's looking, when no one is there to affirm you, when nobody's there to validate you, when nobody is there to agree with you, you build in the dark and you announce it when it's finished. Let me tell you, you're going to fight until you can't fight no more. And when you can't fight anymore, you're going to lay down and bleed a while. And then you're going to get up and fight some more. Sometimes you have to fall back into the dark room and focus on you. There are too many people in your life 
who have left you. There are too many people in your life who have counted you out. There are too many people in your life who have whispered in your ear and said, you'll be worse off without them. Prove them wrong. There are people in your life that claim to be your friends. And honestly, they are just standing there waiting to see you fail. Yeah, you have those friends that come out to support you and tell you how great you are. But when they're driving off, leaving from the event, they're saying to themselves, I can do that better than him. Or I can do that better than her. Disappear and do the work that is required. Sometimes you got to take a break from just about everything, disappear, come back, and shock the world. You've been surrounded by individuals that call themselves your friend. They're just another person that wants to tell you that you cannot accomplish your dreams. Are you worth my time? If you're not, it's time to unplug. Time to unplug. Time to unplug. This is the process when you have to reset and when you have to ghost everyone. I know what it's like to be an underdog. I know what it's like to be laughed at. I know what it's like to have a dream and have no one believe in you. It means nothing. It's all in your head. You see, these people, the ones who laughed at you or told you that you can't, they aren't you. They don't have to wake up every day and feel how you feel. They don't have to hate the reflection they see in the mirror looking back at them. They don't have to go to bed at night feeling empty because there's something they desperately want. That's you, and that's on you. So do something about it. You weren't born to live a second-rate existence. You weren't born to let your dreams, your hopes, and your aspirations pass you by. You were born to fly. You have to go into 2023 with the mindset that you're going to win. That no one and nothing, not even your fears, can stop you from becoming the person you desire to become. Y'all want to work on your goals and your dreams, but you've been working all year round. So now, even though your internal dialogue is screaming for you to grind for something more, you just want to rest. It's time to step into the shoes you were meant to wear. It comes to us as the people. We may not all think the same. But we all have the ability to come together in love. No more will we submit. No more will we say we're done. You're not done yet. Your life is still here. You won't accomplish your goals by living in that glass cage you built around you that limits you from realizing your potential. So take the hammer, smash the glass, jump off the cliff and build your wings on the way down. You'll learn to fly before you fall. The time is now, and you must follow through. I must take action. I must come up with a plan. I must execute that plan. I must give everything that I have, and I cannot, will not, stop until I achieve my goal. So get up. It's time to fight. Will it be easy? No, but nothing worth having ever came easily. What will be the greatest things that you achieve in 2023? Where do you want to advance? Where do you want to make progress? Where do you want to elevate your game? But let me ask you, how would you know that you had? The only way you know that you had is by your ability right here, right now, to see the future that you want to create, to see the results of your efforts. Everyone is capable of doing this, but if you're ready to take this to the next level, let's give you a more powerful perspective. Look, 
Everything that human beings have created has been created twice. First inside their mind and second in reality. So as you take a moment to see the results of your hard work and effort to the point where they feel like it's already happened, let's take this to the next level by seeing the person you've actually become. You see, you're going to meet the person that you're going to be. But what if you could meet that person right here, right now? You don't manifest your dreams by just thinking about them. You manifest your dreams by stretching yourself. You manifest your dreams by not allowing fear, uncertainty, or discomfort to stop you. The resilient mindset takes ownership for its mistakes. It learns, it grows, it revises, it executes, but it never, ever breaks. Don't you get it? You are an unbreakable force. You are an unbreakable spirit. But you just gotta follow through. You just gotta finish. This new year gives you an opportunity to do something that you've never done before in your natural life. I need you to believe once again. Every year, every opportunity that we have been given, it will either make us or it would break us. You are not allowed to be broken. You are not allowed to give in. You are not allowed to say that it's over. This year. Here we go. It's your time. And it's everyone else's time to watch you shine. So what are you going to build in 2023? What are you going to create? What type of lifestyle are you going to live? Who are you going to partner with? What obstacles are you going to break through? It's all up to you. It's time to wake up. Stop making excuses. Stop justifying your laziness. Stop choosing mediocrity. Wake up. Be better than who you used to be. Be better than who you are right now. Everybody else puts off everything until tomorrow, but not you. You are going to choose to be better today. You are going to push through the struggles and hardships that come up this year. You are going to grind until you are exhausted, until you feel like you have nothing more, and then grind harder to achieve more this year, because you deserve it. It's time to set the standard for your family and be the example this year. This year, everything changes. It's time to level up. Don't tell me you want to go to the next level. Don't tell me you want to be great. Don't tell me you want to succeed. When everything that you're doing is leading you to failure. So no more resolutions. We back to action. We about following through. As a matter of fact, your motto for this year and the rest of your life is follow through. You should feel scared. Accomplishing a dream isn't, nor should it ever be easy. But let me alleviate some of that fear. It's not going to be perfect. You may slip or stumble or even fail, but you're going to get back up and keep going. It's your time. It's your turn. Embrace it. New year. New year. New you. New you. What are you going to do? Every struggle that you have been through, every hardship that you had to encounter, you did what must be done and yet you are still here. You fought the good fight, but you did not give up. The hardships, all of these things that we all had to endure, we can endure it a little bit longer. Remember, you are built for any weather or any storm in your face. So let's go. Let's do this. It's time to move. Forget what's happened in the past. Every new year, every new month, every new week, every new 
Today is a chance to write a brand new chapter in your life. New year. New you. This is a great year to win. Winning is not about the trophy and the accolades. It's about the grind. It's about the obstacles. It's about the challenges. It's about the pain. The reason I know so much about winning is because I've had to deal with so much losing. Everybody wants to win, but in order to know how to win, you gotta know how to lose. Because you're gonna lose more than you're gonna win. But what do you gain from it? You've trained some of the greatest of the greats, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Charles Barkley, Dwayne Wade. So you know something about winning. You know something about sustained winning over time. Your mind has to immediately shift back because now you felt and tasted something that you can only get through winning. Are you willing to do it again? And that was one of Kobe's favorite words when it related to winning. He says, you have to be obsessed with whatever your win is. Be all in. Three greatest lessons I learned from Michael. Competing, accountability, and then winning at all levels. Winning at all levels, what does that mean? You just don't win in one arena. You win in your sports, you win in business, you win in your personal life. Other people win because you win. It isn't just about you. It's about being able to pull the team and show them what it feels like to win. And this isn't about playing basketball like Michael Jordan did, like the late great Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade. This is about having the mindset to win. When you fail, your feelings give you excuses. Your mind makes you more resilient. You look at when Kobe, his first playoff series, he had this horrible game where he shot like four or five straight air balls. Now, he could have came back next year and said, I got to prove everybody that's man, you're too young, why'd you take? No, he was just like, you know what? That's on me. I have to own that moment. Now, I got to prove to myself I can overcome this because now everybody else is doubting me, but I can't doubt myself. Everybody told MJ, don't go to North Carolina. You'll never play. You shouldn't be here. And Michael went out and he said, I don't need to prove to coach. I don't need to prove to Buzz. I need to prove to myself that I belong here. I always say, you can have fear, but you can't have doubt. When I was working with my professional athletes, it required me to do a lot of traveling. And this story gets me every time. So when people say, it didn't hurt, it still hurts. I was packing for a trip. My daughter walks into the room. She says, Dad, why do you travel so much? I said, sweetheart, this is how I provide for the family. This is how I take care of you and mom. This is how I put food on the table. She looks at me and says, Daddy, if I eat less, will you stay home more? Now people would think in a fairy tale, or most people would say, I unpacked my suitcase. I'm not going to take this trip. I mean, let's go grab some ice cream or let's go out. I kept packing. Why? I had to set an example for her early of what it meant to win and what you have to leave behind sometimes in order to pursue what's unique to you. And I wanted her to understand this is who I am. And I want to set an example for you. 
I had a conversation with her later on to tell her why I did all those things. And in the middle of the conversation, she stopped me. She goes, I get it. I understand. She saw the results. She saw how it brought us closer together. She understood my dedication to my craft and what it took to excel and what it took to be different and what it took to stand by unpopular decisions knowing that every successful person that I've met, every successful person that I know has had to make those decisions over and over again. There are things that are gonna to have to take a back seat. You're gonna to have to leave a lot of things behind. The hardest thing with Kobe was getting him to stop. Yeah, okay, take a break, rest. Yes. Take the day off. That was the most challenging thing with him because over all the years, that he had his success. It was about go, go, go. And then when I came on, I was the complete icicle. I gotta get you to stop. His 3 a.m. workouts, yeah. they're crazy. crazy. You know, having to keep the Staples Center open later because he wasn't happy the way he performed at that game. And I would not leave till he would leave. Really? Yeah, so we would be, we would be in the arena sometimes two, three o'clock in the morning. Shut up. All the lights are turned off except on the court and we just keep going, we just keep going. What is the mindset of winning? They both had that. So I look at it, I look at it three ways. So you have individuals that compete. Mm -hmm. You know a lot of people that compete. Yeah. You know, every, we all know how to compete. Everybody knows how to, how to compete. You don't forget how to compete. We just decide not to anymore. But some, a lot of people compete just to finish. Then there's individuals that win, but they only win one time. It's easy to win and then never win again. And then there's people that win at winning. You can't come back the same cannot come back the same. You have to come back different. You have to come back better. Winning wants you to be different. Winning requires you to do different things. Winning requires you to think in a different way. Winning speaks its own language. Winning has its own way of recognizing you. Winning wants you to write your own story. Stop looking for steps. Those steps are infinite. Find your own path to winning. Because as the late, great Kobe Bryant said, winning is everything. I know the feeling. No, this is not that fake lion, tigers, and bears motivation. This is that growing up in the slums. Watching your mom nod on the couch as you go to school. We want more. We want more out of this life. And if you're not willing to give that to us, we're going to take it. To have an underdog mentality. Like everybody's already counted you out. Like everybody's already told you, you don't have what it takes. You don't measure up. That what you started, you will not finish. Claw your way into your future. Fight for your goal. Give it everything you have because you have nothing to lose. Life's gonna hit you in your mouth and you gotta do me a huge favor. Your why has to be greater than that knocked out. And I love it, Buster Douglas got knocked out. Nobody ever got knocked out by Mike Tyson and ever got back up. It was almost a 10 count. I, he was stumbling. They were four, three, two, one, and ding, 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 saved by the bell. He goes to his corner, the whole world is like, up. Oh, that's it. Once he comes back out, that's it. Mike's gonna just hammer him. And exactly that, Mike Tyson came out like I got him. 
I got this kid up against the rope. Listen to me, many of you right now, life's got you up against the rope. You can't give up, you can't give in. Listen to me, if it was easy, everybody would do it. And if life's got you backed up, I need you to do what Buster Douglas did. Buster Douglas start fighting back. What an uppercut by Douglas, and down goes Tyson. The world was shot. <gasps> Goliath has been knocked down. What happened? And they went to Buster Douglas and they asked Buster Douglas simply like, what happened? And Buster Douglas said, listen to me, it's real simple. Before my mother died, she told the whole world that I was going to be Mike Tyson. And two days before the fight, my mother died. Buster Douglas had, he had a decision to make. When his mother died, he could die with his mother, or he made a decision, I can wake up and I can live for mom. And he knocked Mike Tyson out simply because his why was greater than that punch. His why was greater than defeat. His why was greater than his trial and his tribulation. And I'm telling you, if you don't know what your why is, and your why isn't strong, you're gonna get knocked out every single day. A man is not a man by his age. A man is a man by his experiences. What he goes through, what he fights through, that's what makes a warrior. That's what makes the greatest of all time. I will end my life in a bottomless pit. I'm gonna rise and I'm gonna show the world that greatness is obtained by the man that never stopped pushing. I believe and I stand on it to this day as long as the sun is shining on my face and not on my grave. I got an opportunity of a lifetime. When you fight as if you are already dead, you are without restraint. You are a disruptor. You break all the rules because you have nothing to lose. You are desperate for resurrection and you will do anything that is required to accomplish the goal you are setting out to achieve. I don't care how good you are, I don't care how talented you are, because Bruce Lee said it best, a warrior is an average person with laser-like focus. A warrior is an average person with laser-like focus. Don't even worry about your ability. Don't you worry about opportunity. I need you to be a warrior right now and let your work get your opportunity. Let your work get your praise. Let your work open up doors. Let your work get people paying attention. Let your work get the whole world to notice. You gotta work. Stop thinking. Stop procrastinating. And you gotta work. I need you to rise up to fulfill your dreams. Rise up and attack your goals. There's no time to sleep. No time to nap. No time to waste. If you fall asleep, wake up and rise up again. You should work so hard that you collapse in the bed at night. Sometimes in the afternoon you're so weary from grinding that your body just collapses. That's okay. Have sweet sleep, but when you wake up, grind again. Now is your time. Now is your season. Now is the moment to capture the vision. To win any battle, you must fight as if you are already dead. You better go inside. You still looking outside for the stuff that's already inside. You still looking for someone to save you when you are pretty your superhero. You looking for some information from somebody when you already got what you need in your head. It's just time for you to get up and be the best version of you. You don't believe that you have the potential and the capability to be the best of yourself. So why? You just sit back and you wait for somebody to pat you on the shoulder and say it's okay. At least you gave it your best. Your best ain't good enough. Your best don't work. You need to go beyond your best. You need to go beyond the level. You need to let the world know that you exist. You need to let the world know that you made different. You built different. You're stronger. You're more passionate. You believe in yourself. When the rest of the world shuts you down, you woke up the next day and you said, I got this. I do this. I breathe this. I am this. You can't stop me. Here's what success is all about. You need these three things. Are you ready? You need skill set, mindset, and opportunity. You need to rise up and understand what success is all about. Skill set, work on your skill. Mindset, work on your mentality, baby, and your opportunity will come. There will always be a million reasons to say no, a million reasons to play it safe, a million reasons to stay comfortable. 
but you won't achieve your dreams staying in your comfort zone. You won't accomplish your goals by living in that glass cage you built around you that limits you from realizing your potential. So take the hammer, smash the glass, jump off the cliff and build your wings on the way down. You'll learn to fly before you fall. If you are listening to this and feeling scared, you should feel scared. Accomplishing a dream isn't, nor should it ever be easy. You know some individuals like it easy. They like it put on a pedestal for them. But some of us gotta grind. We gotta dig. We gotta make it happen for ourselves. You see, no, we never did it for the money. We did it to stop the blood. We did it to stop the pain. We did it to turn the showers into sunshine. We won't stop until our family no longer struggles. We won't stop until we're number one. This will not be easy, but in the end, you will win. And you know why I'm so passionate? Because the rest of the world don't understand my passion. The other world don't want my passion. They think my passion is too much. I'm gonna give you a little bit more. You know why? Because passion is what makes me who I am today. What are you? And what are you prepared to do? Are you prepared to fight? Are you prepared to bleed? Are you prepared to work? It's not an option. And the reason why some of you are not where you're supposed to be, you've given yourself an option. You've given yourself an out. You've given yourself an excuse. You've given yourself room not to do it. I'm not speaking no more to entertain. I'm not speaking to help people. I'm speaking so my girl never have to go back to work again. I'm speaking so that the MS don't kill her. I got a different try. I got a different why. I got to make this $1.8 million so my girl can quit for the rest of her life. I'm taking all gigs. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And the problem with some of you in this room, you don't have no drive. You ain't got nothing pushing you. You ain't got no reason for waking up in the morning. You ain't got no reason for pushing past that pain. You have no reason. You better find one before you get out of here today. Our lives are so short. There is no time to waste. While the rest of the world is sleeping, you are wide awake. And you are on the attack for your success. It doesn't start with them and they. It starts with me. So I'm just wondering when you're gonna make it personal. Are you really prepared to grind it out? Everybody wants public authority, but nobody wants private discipline. When your habits change behind the scenes, when your private life begins to shift, when you put aside the things that are not serving you, if it's going to be personal, make it personal. Don't just be great in public, be great in private. Success doesn't always have to be loud. Sometimes it's necessary to be quiet and just move. Are you really prepared to do what you need to do to get what you want out of your life? You gotta live, you have to breathe, you have to eat this purpose. Every single day, you are either losing ground or gaining ground. You are not going to win anything until you understand what struggle means. You can never quit. But you gotta work hard in silence. You gotta work when nobody's watching. You gotta sacrifice behind the scenes. When you take it personal, your private life changes. Success is a process. The process comes before success. The struggle comes before the process. Everybody wants to contribute to destiny, but nobody wants to be committed to destiny. What kind of work are you putting in behind the scenes? What can you conquer in the dark? 
How personal is your purpose? This is what we call grinding in silence. Not everyone needs to understand your true motives. Not everyone needs to understand your purpose. Not everyone needs to understand your mission. But the truth is, it's about passion. It's about discipline. It's about awareness. It's about accountability. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you got to be accountable for your actions. But are you prepared to grind it out? Are you prepared to dig a little bit deeper? Are you prepared to fight a little bit harder? Are you prepared to put in overtime? Somewhere along the line, you lost your footing, you lost your place. It got cold, too cold for you. And see, one thing about an achiever is rain, sleet, or snow, they keep building. But you have not sacrificed, you have not suffered, you are not committed. When you are committed, you give everything you have. Every single week, every single day, every single hour, every single minute, 720 hours a month, you are beating on your craft. Even when you're at work, you're dreaming, you're thinking, you're vision casting, you're writing it down, making it play, communicating to your destiny connections so that it can become a reality. If you can see it in your head, you can hold it in your hands. But the question I wanna ask you is, are you committed? Now it's time to grind. Now it's time to fight. Now it's time to believe. Now it's time to know that your success story has yet to be told. Don't sit back and have a pity party. Don't sit back and wait for an opportunity to happen. It is up to you to go out there and get the opportunities. You want success? Then go get it. You want to be better? Then be better. You want something more than what you have right now? Then you got to have the desire within your heart and go strong and go with everything you have. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know what you've been called to do, what you've been called to accomplish, what you've been destined to build, who you've been called to be connected to, but the dots will connect. Every single moment that you have is an opportunity of a lifetime. Are you committed or are you just contributing? The choice is yours. But this time, make it personal. Hear my voice. Know that you do have some work to do. The work that you do will determine the outcome in the end. But do it in silence. The ones that need to be a part of your development, they will always be there. And the ones that doubted you I'm talking about the naysayers. Just simply say, shh, be quiet, because you have nothing to do with my success. You gotta give 110% and get it to a point where all you got to say is, shh. You don't have nothing to do with my success. The noise that you making can't stop my purpose. The noise that you making can't stop my fight. The noise that you making can't stop my grind. Your noise is just empty. 
It means nothing to my success. I didn't get it overnight. And yes, I had many sleepless nights. And I had amazing dreams of what I could become. Can you stretch yourself? Can you condition yourself? Come on, can you believe again? Can you see it again? Can you write again? Can you make this thing personal? That it doesn't start with the people connected to you. It starts with you. It doesn't even start with your past. It starts with where you are and where you're going. Can you look ahead? Can you stretch forth? Can you condition yourself? Can you prepare yourself for the next thing? Come on, make it personal. But you gotta work hard in silence. You gotta take it personal. I make this thing personal. So while you're sitting around, second guessing yourself, my beautiful people, get back on your grind. Be productive. Keep your head up high. Stay in the moment. Live every moment. Move in silence. And from the bottom of my heart, conduct your business. You got to learn how to move in silence. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know what you've been called to do, what you've been called to accomplish, what you've been destined to build. It's time to take a deep dive into the deeper parts of yourself, the parts of you that nobody sees. When you take something personal, it gets personal. I'm not just putting on the front. I'm not just here in public to make you smile and applaud me and support me and make comments and share my video. I'm not here. I make this thing personal. Everything that I do in public, I've done it in private. And so I'm just asking you, don't just scream on a stage or be connected to millionaires or strive to be a CEO or an investor or a politician or an athlete or a musician or a singer. I'm just wondering, can you conquer in the dark? When you make it personal, what you do behind closed doors matters. So I'm just wondering when you're gonna make it personal. When you're gonna make it about what it looks like that nobody sees. The part of you that nobody sees, where's your integrity behind the scenes? Come on, where are your values behind the scenes? What do your habits look like behind the scenes? Come on, what kind of work are you putting in behind the scenes? Come on, drop down and give me 50. Come on, write it again. Come on, believe it again. Come on, sing again, record the song again. Come on, I'm talking to that athlete. I'm talking to that musician. Come on, who are you out there? That philosopher, that engineer, that thought leader, that critical thinker, come on, that captain of industry, I'm talking to you when your personal life lines up with your purpose. Then public authority is yours. You want influence? I'm not talking about just fame. I'm talking about influence, the power to change people's lives. Can you stretch yourself? Can you condition yourself? Come on, can you believe again? Can you see it again? Can you write again? Can you make this thing personal? That it doesn't start with the people connected to you. It starts with you. It doesn't even start with your past. It starts with where you are and where you're going. Can you look ahead? Can you stretch for it? Can you condition yourself? Can you prepare yourself for the next thing? Come on, make it personal. It doesn't start with everybody. It starts with me because people will leave you for dead. And then what's your why? What did God put in you? Release it to the world. If it's going to be personal, make it personal. Don't just be great in public, be great in private. What you do in dark, if I pulled up your search history, what would I find? Would you still be an example to the world? If I went through your closet, if I went through your basement, if I went through your attic, if I went through your center council, if I went through your house, how personal is your purpose? Every single day, you are either losing ground or gaining ground. The choice is yours. But this time, make it personal. If you're going to do it, if you're going to accomplish it, if you're going to achieve it, even if you're confused and it's cold and it looks crazy, and you're gonna to need to know the difference between contribution and commitment. 
because they're two very different things. See, everybody wants to contribute to destiny, but nobody wants to be committed to destiny. You want to contribute to the idea that you can be something. You want to contribute to the idea that something's going to come of the sacrifice that you have made, but you have not sacrificed, you have not suffered, you are not committed. When you are committed, you give everything you have. Every single week, every single day, every single hour, every single minute, 720 hours a month, you are beating on your craft. Even when you're at work, you're dreaming, you're thinking, you're vision casting, you're writing it down, making it play, communicating to your destiny connections so that it can become a reality. If you can see it in your head, you can hold it in your hands. But the question I want to answer is, are you committed? I'm just wondering if you are bold enough, daring enough, if you can believe in your dream again, if you can get committed. See, when you get personal, when you make it personal, everything changes. Because you see, you made it about your girlfriend last time, you made it about your boyfriend last time. You made it about your kids last time. And your kids started acting up and then you let the dream go. It's got to start with you and God first. Listen, God put a gift inside of everybody and it's our responsibility to release it to the world. This time, it's personal. So do it for your loved ones. Do it for your wife, do it for your husband, do it for your children, do it for generations to come. Come on, after you're dead and gone, what will they say about what you did? Yes, there's so many people depending on you, but it's gotta start with you and the man upstairs. What he put in you, make it personal. Everything in my life breathes and eats this purpose that I have. I gotta make it personal. It's, it's, it starts with me. When it starts with me, it ends with me. I don't know where you are in your game of life. You may be in your third quarter. You may be in your fourth quarter. Come on, you're not gonna live forever. Not in this world, come on. You may be in your first quarter, your, your second half, and this time it's gotta be personal. See, last time you were just running through the plays. Last time you were just running the songs that you rehearsed in rehearsal. Last time you were just going through the motions and you got numb, come on, and you got tired and weary, and now you're broken and bitter and angry because you lost. And I'm just wondering if you're courageous enough, bold enough, if you have enough faith, come on, if you have enough inside of you resilience to come back to the scene and make it personal. It's rain, sleet, or snow, keep building. And so this time it's gotta be personal. And you may not feel qualified. You may not feel like you are educated enough. You may not feel like you're connected enough. You may not think that enough people are aware of you, cognizant of you, because you don't have a blue check and you're not a celebrity yet. But you gotta work hard in silence. You gotta work when nobody's watching. You gotta sacrifice behind the scenes. You gotta take it personal. When you take it personal, your private life changes. Everybody wants public authority, but nobody wants private discipline. When your habits change behind the scenes, when your private life begins to shift, when you put aside the things that are not serving you, if you can make it personal, it's personal. It doesn't start with them and they. It starts with me. It starts with me. So make it personal. Let yourself go, fall free into it. Step into it, you are worthy. You are an unrepeatable miracle and there is none like you in all the earth. There will never be another you. Your DNA, your fingerprint, come on. Your gait, your presence, your authenticity. Come on, you're special. You're special and you're necessary. This year, everything changes. What in the world are you waiting for? The time is now to start applying what you know. New year, new you. What are you gonna do? You're about to be given a second chance at greatness. A fresh start. 
So what are you going to build in 2023? What are you going to create? What were you placed here to do? This new year gives you an opportunity to do something that you've never done before in your natural life. It's all up to you. But are you ready to compound like never before for 365 days to put the work in? So what are you gonna do? Every year we go through the same cycle. You make a resolution and then you break it before January even ends. I'm gonna execute, execute, execute. Two weeks later, everything hits the fan. So no more resolutions. We about that action. Get to work. You have to go into 2023 with the mindset that you're going to win. That no one and nothing can stop you. It's time to step into the shoes you were meant to wear. So, tomorrow. What will be your greatest achievement in 2023? Will it be what you have or will it be who you have become? Am I going to repeat my history or will I blaze a new trail? Whatever you say you're going to do, follow through. Guys, you got to start walking and stop talking. To become the best version of you, you got to follow through. We need to change that internal dialogue. Tell yourself, this is my year! It's time to wake up. What are you waiting for? It's your time. Embrace it. Everything you do has to change. See, the you from 365 days from now will love you for taking action. The you from 365 days from now will love you for following through. The you from 365 days from now will reap the benefits of all of your hard work, for all of your action taking, for all of your execution. No excuses. Your mindset is the time is now and you must follow through. I must take action. I must come up with a plan. I must execute that plan. I must give everything that I have and I cannot, will not stop. Be consistent. You can't give 110% on Monday and Tuesday and then give 80% the rest of the week. Listen, growth and success doesn't work that way. You can only get out what you put in. So what are you going to build in 2023? What are you going to create? Your future self already exists and you in 365 days. The challenge is how committed are you to becoming this person? How committed are you? You see, we procrastinate. We procrastinate because we always think we can just do it tomorrow. Tomorrow will always be there. We could just do it next week. We could just do it next month. Hell, we could do it next year. But guess what? Next year is here. The day you keep talking about as to when you will start is here. You see, tomorrow is not guaranteed. So what are you gonna do? If you want elevation, if you want next level, if you wanna see this thing differently this year, everything you do has to change. First, we conquer the day and then we execute the week, and that week turns into a month, and that month turns into a quarter, and that quarter turns into a year, and then all of a sudden you look up and you are a disciplined, desperate, dangerous fulfiller of destiny. You're going to grind until you are exhausted, until you feel like you have nothing more, and then grind harder to achieve more this year because you deserve it.
When you have your mind made up that no matter how you're feeling every day, you're going to give it everything you have. You're going to give, you're going to see, you're going to sow, you're going to serve and give it everything you have. Then all of a sudden the world opens up to you. See, you've been sleeping on your brilliance for too long. You've been doubting yourself for too long. It's time for you to show up like the person you know you were created to become. It's time for you to unleash your inner warrior. You have to dry those tears and get up and fight for what belongs to you. See the resilient mindset? It takes ownership for its mistakes. It learns, it grows, it revises, it executes, but it never ever breaks. I don't think you heard me. I said the resilient mindset takes ownership for its mistakes. It learns, it grows, it revises, it executes, but it never ever breaks. Don't you get it? You are an unbreakable force. You are an unbreakable spirit. Stop making excuses. Stop justifying your laziness. Be better than who you used to be. Be better than who you are right now. You are going to choose to be better today. You are going to push through the struggles and hardships that come up this year. The truth is that there are only three things standing between you and the vision that you have for your life. They are your thought patterns, your behavior patterns, and how you feel. You have untapped potential on the inside of you. You have confidence and boldness on the inside of you. What type of a lifestyle are you going to live? Who are you going to partner with? What obstacles are you going to break through? Don't settle for good enough. Don't settle for staying in your comfort zone. Don't settle for doing things the way they've always been done. This is that New Year's energy that pump you up, that gets you up out your seat, to get you up out your bed, to put yourself in a position to win each and every day of your life. You said you was gonna do it last year, but you didn't. You said you was gonna do it the year before last, but you didn't. You made a promise to yourself and you broke it. This is an opportunity for you actually to keep a promise that you make to yourself, for you actually to keep a promise that you make to others. New year, new you, what are you gonna do? Wake up! You are meant for more. The time is now. Let's make 2023 the year where we advance like never before. Let's make 2023 the year where we become our future selves. Dear past me, I know that there were times that you wanted to give up. Times that you wanted to throw in the towel and quit. Times when life was so hard and it just seemed like there was no light at the end of the tunnel. You went through loss. You almost lost everything at one point or another. Both of your parents are gone now. And hardships. People judged you. So many people didn't believe in you. You failed at things again and again. But you know what? You didn't give up. You kept going. You pushed through. You kept your head held high. Why were you working so hard? Because you were trying to get it. Why were you at the gym so many hours? Because you were trying to get it. Why did you turn down those parties? And those drinks and those drugs? Because you were trying to get it. You're going to have to have those losses. 
You're going to have to fall back a few times. But you got to keep going forward. When the wind is pushing you back, you got to push through it. You stay focused. Dear past me, thank you for the lessons. Dear future, I am ready, ready to start over, ready to drop the parties, the drinks, and the haters that are bringing me down, ready to give it everything you have, ready to work, ready to enter a new phase of life, ready to drop those friends and family members who did not support me and my goal and my dreams. Ready to grow and get better. Ready to eat healthy and work out often. Because where you're headed, you're going to want to keep on living, ready to fail again and again. Because you know those failures will be forgotten, except from those lessons learned from them. And all those times in your future where you don't fail, that's you forging your legacy. All the risks that you take, the experience you have, and the memories you make. I'm ready. I'm ready to wake up each morning knowing that every day is a new adventure. This is what it's all about. The future, the now. My mind is clear. Goodbye negativity, goodbye gossip and drama and fake friends and those people hurting me. You know that good things don't come easy. But you are ready to embrace the hardship. This is my life. You are stronger now than ever before. The time that you have right now is to make a difference. Make it possible through the good and the bad. Make it possible. Do better. Be better. Keep moving. Never quit. So today, you start ready to change the world. Your gifts your inventions, your passion, ready for a new beginning. You cannot change your past, but you can definitely learn from it. And you can always change your future.